What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, talking today about the next generation of consoles because we finally have pretty much all the details, including release dates, price points, launch games, and to be perfectly honest, I am extremely hyped. But now it comes down to the more difficult decision, which is, which game consoles do I buy? What makes this version of this next generation so different is the fact that we're going to have multiple styles of these next gen consoles at launch. Now, those of us were kind of used to the point now of a PlayStation 4 versus a PlayStation 4 Pro, there's an Xbox One X versus an Xbox One S. I think that gamers are kind of getting acclimated to the idea of multiple versions of all the consoles, but this still feels different because, of course, now we're having multiple versions of the systems at launch, and this is still a very confusing mess. So, as of the recording of this video, we know everything about the console when it comes to the Xbox. The Xbox Next Gen has actually talked about everything from their versions to their price points and even the release dates. That stuff is about to be revealed for the PlayStation 5 here in about 48 hours. I am going to be streaming the price reveal event because it seems like it's going to be really cool, but already it's time for me to sit down and actually consider which systems am I going to buy. I am very into the idea of purchasing consoles day one. The last couple generations, I've actually really enjoyed purchasing every system right at launch. The Xbox 360, the PlayStation 3 I had about two months after release, the Dreamcast, the PlayStation 2, and the Super Nintendo. And all of these systems have been incredibly fun to see grow and expand their libraries, but it was also just the fact that it's next-gen tech. Each of these systems, as they came out, it was kind of the obvious choice because there was just one of them. It was just a machine you bought because it played the newest games. Things now are going to kind of be blurry and different, but let's start off by talking about the Xbox because this is definitely the more confusing one or the one that's kind of confusing more people, especially on the internet, because of headlines like this. The Xbox Series S will not play Xbox One enhanced versions of games, but instead will run Xbox One S versions of Xbox... Okay, so this looks like it's a title that's written by somebody having a freaking stroke, but if you really go into the details itself, it's not that crazy. The biggest thing you have to realize is that the Xbox One S, or sorry, in this case, the Xbox Series S, I'm trying to get these stupid names right, the Xbox Series S is made to be the cheapest way to get into next-gen gaming. It is going to be playing some great games, it has some good stuff to it, but the main key detail is that it's not supposed to run 4K. It can't run 4K, whereas the previous-gen console, the Xbox One X, is, strangely enough, built to do 4K. Now, if you look at the actual specifications, this is a tech breakdown by Microsoft themselves of the Xbox Series X versus the Xbox Series S. Now, both of these systems are pretty impressive, especially this bad boy. When it comes to, like, raw specifications, the Series X is a powerhouse. This is going to be the strongest and best, you know, air quotes, best versions of next third-party games. Although I have to admit that I do have a soft spot for, uh, th this looks cool to me. The Series S, as goofy as it is, as much as people are memeing it, I genuinely like how tiny and sleek this is, but if we look at the hardware specifications, even if you don't understand like all the technical details and mumbo jumbo, we can all recognize the fact that the GPU power, this is this number right here, that's going to be a third as big. Also, if you look at a lot of the other specifications, the Series S is surprisingly keeping up. I mean, it's not like this is a huge technical downgrade, it's a slimming. The major deal breaker for me though, and the thing that I think is gonna kind of make the most gamers not want once an Xbox Series S is this number right here, which is actually the storage. One terabyte of solid state memory is going to be inside the Xbox Series S, or sorry, Series X. God, these names are so stupid. There is there going to be one terabyte of data, internal storage of the Xbox Series X, and there's only going to be 512 gigs inside the Xbox Series S. <sighs> 
Okay, so if you're not properly confused yet, the biggest thing you need to realize is if you're buying the slimmer version of the system, while it is going to be $200 cheaper, you're also getting a lot less storage, and for a system that doesn't have a disk drive, this is going to be something that is eventually going to be a problem. People have actually complained in the past about how certain games like Call of Duty Modern Warfare already takes up like 100 gigabytes, which means that if you happen to have this next-gen system, that's already going to be a fifth of your total storage and that to me is the biggest turnoff especially because they have talked a little bit about this the fact that there will be an expandable ex storage slot you can actually add additional memory to your system for $220 so hypothetically just put on your imagination caps say that you're somebody that decides to save money up front and you decide I'm going to buy the Xbox Series S. I want to start out cheap. I want to see what Xbox is doing. I want to get used to Games Pass. And then you fill up your hard drive relatively quick with all these games you're installing. Well, what do you do? you got to go out and buy this new expanded storage. So that means that this system that was originally $299 is now basically $500 anyways because of the $200 expanded storage that you're now purchasing. It's for that reason that I've decided to start with the Xbox Series X, if I can find it. I'm not super into the idea of 4K gaming, just because even though I have a 4K TV, I still don't think a lot of games are doing 4K that much. I still think that that's an idea that's off in the distance. It is a target goal that we're probably not going to hit for a year or two, but I'm going to be purchasing the Xbox Series X, just because it feels more future-proof, and genuinely the biggest thing is in fact just that physical actual storage being bigger. Now going on to the PS5, there's been a lot of rumors right now about the PlayStation 5 because we still haven't heard the official price from Sony themselves. They've talked a lot about the cool games we're going to be playing from Ratchet and Clank to Demon Souls, but they haven't said the price point or the release date. It's pretty obvious that it's going to be in November and there's already just so many leaks and stuff about the fact that one of these systems is definitely going to be $500. There is the all digital edition and then there's the standard PlayStation 5 and pretty much every Everybody assumes that it's going to be this breakdown. Here we have Jez Corden. This guy is a super intelligent guy. He talks about Microsoft stuff predominantly, but he's very, very in touch with the gaming community. And his speculation is something I fully agree with, which is that it's most likely going to be $399 for the digital PlayStation 5, and then $500 if you want to get the, uh, the bigger, fancier version that has a disk drive. Now for me, this one is a much easier choice. I am going to be getting the $500 disk drive edition. And to be perfectly honest, the reason why is because I do own a decent amount of physical PlayStation 4 games. I have like 60 or 70 like physical PlayStation 4 games, but I do also own over 400 digital PlayStation 4 games. So it's not necessarily just about the games I own now though. Something I do every single console generation is I am a big physical game collector. If you actually look at my background, this is only a tiny piece of my total collection. I have over a thousand physical games. And part of the reason I get this, it's not just wasting hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Right after a console generation stops being like the new cool thing, there is a steep price drop. And so each of the console generations, whenever the new console comes out, I will buy last gen games for dirt cheap. Seriously, so many of the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of games I get are super good games and I pay like one or two dollars each. I mean, seriously, I have piles of these that I paid bottom dollar for. And I am actually excited for that when it comes to this next gen because the PlayStation 5 is apparently going to play a majority of PlayStation 4 games. So if I have that physical cartridge slot or I have this ability to play still my discs even in the future, it's going to be cool and definitely a good investment in my opinion to actually go out there and keep scrounging up the older PlayStation 4 games even as the new giant cool epic PlayStation 5 experiences are coming out. 
I consider it almost a retro-proofing. Whereas, when it comes to Xbox, um, I'm still sort of on board with the idea of the Xbox Series S, because even though it doesn't have a disk drive, Microsoft practically gives their games away with Games Pass. It's not as relevant as the way that, since PlayStation owners like myself were purchasing each and every game individually, you need to make sure you're always having that disk drive to constantly be able to keep that up to date. I am buying both though. I'm going to try and get both day one if possible, but I am slightly nervous. I do think that there is going to be some pretty big problems with scarcity and consoles just because of the pandemic. I think that Microsoft and Sony, they've wanted to try and make as many as possible. It's not like they're trying to be goofballs and have false scarcity. It is just straight up that the supply is way different than the demand. But I'm still going to be buying it, I'm still going to be reviewing these consoles, and I am still going to be extremely hyped for the fact that we're coming up on 200,000 subscribers, thanks for that. Which consoles are you buying? Which consoles are you most hyped about? Tell me your thoughts in the comments down below, and is there a certain console that you absolutely will not buy for any price? Tell me your thoughts in the comments, and please do me a favor, leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and keep dreaming. I also have this copy of original Final Fantasy still on my desk. Ooh, look at that. Original Japanese Final Fantasy. Mm, the game that started it all. Oh god, someone's probably gonna leave me a hate comment for kissing an old game. Whatever, whatever. Nerds, nerds! Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.